I was finally able to cut a video together demonstrating how I do my tops, guys. This is going to be awesome. So right away, this is what I have uh, for doing tops in steel and concrete. This is the 351. This is the DX351 with uh, steel pins. Okay, with steel pins. I have my cordless saw for backing. Okay, we have my saw for backing, my drywall gun, right? And my router. And I'm using the standard point bit, okay? Standard point bits for my router for cutting the uh, things out of my tops, not guide point. Not guide point. And then, yeah, all your fasteners, everything, make sure everything's up here on the lift with you. I have backing. I have a four-foot level, a four-foot level. And then you want squares, one to two-foot squares are great to have, especially if you're an apprentice or working with an apprentice. Hey, the main thing here is to be organized, right, guys? What I do is I go ahead and I measure all my tops. Then I cut them all. Then I put them on, okay? If I'm working with uh, an apprentice, I'll have the apprentice go ahead and cut them all, and I'll put them on. Make sure you got everything you need up on the lift with you. Uh, here, what you're doing is you're obviously going to screw in the studs from the sheets below, okay? Get that done and out of the way. So when you put the tops on, you know where the studs are. Sometimes you don't always draw in your centers, but if you mark them with the with the screws, then you don't have to, um, to draw any lines. Measuring is pretty simple, okay? You need to find what I call a gravy piece. Uh, so find a piece inside the wall somewhere that doesn't have any cutouts so that you can start from there and then you can work your way out from that point. These lids here is a are a double layer. This is a double layer wall. Measuring from right to left, and I'm writing the numbers down. Watch this part. When I get a little further in the video, that you'll see it even closer up. So measure side to side, and if you're working with somebody, you're just going to shout these numbers out. Uh, you're not going to be writing them down. Save some time and shout them out. Let's say that this, this sheet right here was like my gravy piece. I'm going to put this piece on first, and then I'm going to work out this way and the other way. You'll be going left to right on th this way, and you'll be going uh, right to left the other way. Find a gravy piece and start from there and then basically if you're working with an apprentice you get them to use the two foot square and the one foot square and you you basically square over to the bevel make a tick make a tick for everything these girts here okay uh you have to cut them up and into the inside of the girt here right so you're gonna get you're, there's gonna be a few different measurements you're gonna want to get but you get the bottom one squared over and then you're gonna want to get this this mark this mark and then this mark okay there's gonna be three ups for a girt right that's for the up and for the over the same thing. You're going to want the outside of the lip, the inside of the girt, and then the outside. Okay, there's going to be three marks for that as well. The eye, like these braces, okay, when you go bottom up, you're going, okay, and don't forget, when you're going bottom up, you're going from the, from the butt, right? The butt joint, bottom up. You need to get this number, the inside and outside of the angles. There's three ups for that as well, and there'll be three overs. This is what we call them, ups and overs. You're going to get one on the outside, inside, and outside. And it's just write those numbers down. Give yourself, give yourself a little bit of room, okay? Like up to an eighth, up to an eighth, depending on what you're doing. But I, I try to stay as tight as possible uh, when I'm doing my tops, so unless there's a certain thing that needs, we need to be further away, okay? But um, generally, I go within a sixteenth. I go tight as I possibly can. Actually, there's the gravy piece right there. You can see it. So right here is the gravy piece. This is where I, I would have started. Okay, there's no cuts on this piece. So I put, I'm using backing on this. So it makes, when you have backing, it makes it really easy to do tops, okay? Because then you can have these small, 
uh, joints to your cutouts. And you, you see how I, I just put a piece of backing in this way that stuck out over here. And that's how I got that little piece on. You can see the numbers up here. Okay, I got that number, this number on the inside. And the inside and outside, I, I obviously there's four numbers on the on these ones going over, because this top one is not in line with the bottom. It's a different uh, it's a different number. So I uh, you gotta measure tight to everything. Bottom up, you're measuring the bottom in the top of this lip, and to the bottom of that one. That's how that goes. Okay, and then you're drawing it on the board and you're cutting it out. A lot of the times, like you're gonna have to cut, like if you're not using, if you don't have backing and you can't use backing, right? And then uh, uh, you're like right here, obviously, is another example of, of, of a use of backing in this piece. Uh, you might have to cut the tops bigger out towards the closest stud, but you'll see it when you're up there doing it. This top here, I think think is the one I'll be cutting uh, in the next segment here to show you guys. So the, these are, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a circle, if it's a pipe, if it's a, if it's a circle for a, any size of pipe. What I do is I measure from center this way, right? And this way, and I find the center and I have what I have a circle cutter or a circle cutter. It's a, it's a pretty cool uh it's a it's a very handy device for cutting circles and what basically you just set it to the diameter of the like the full diameter of the circle and you find the center and you make a circle with it it's simple right it's a really really cool tool now if you don't have a circle cutter then you should get one but you can you can like you can figure it out Right from like with a with a with a saw, it's just not going to look very nice. But you want to get the bottom, the top, and the side to side. If I'm working with an apprentice, I'll get him to use the square and square over to the bevel, right, and make a tick for the for the bottom and the top of the pipe. I'll make him square it over, okay, and make a tick for the top and bottom, and uh, for the for the over as well. Yep, two foot square, even a T square will work. Okay, you have a T square, uh, one foot square, and a T, uh, two foot square, and a combination square is what I have actually. And I just I make my apprentices square everything down. So I, I'll square down these numbers. This here I can get by running my tape measure always. This side number you should be able to get side to side with your tape measure. But if you're having issues with things, you can always square them down to square them to the bevel or the or the butt. Right, the butt is the bottom, or the bevel is the side. You can see sometimes tops can get a little crazy. So here is the complete wall. You're going to notice the uh, the joints here. So I have a 12 foot stand up, okay? And then there would would have been an 8 foot top and then a 2 foot top. Um so all, there would have been a joint up here anyway, right? So I just lowered it down. I, I brought the joint down because of the pipe. I couldn't get the lift around the pipe very easily here. So uh, I, I ended up uh, moving this joint down a little bit, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so you kind of notice too the slope of the ceiling. I'm measuring both sides of the of the sheet for the top, right? Right, left, okay? I'm measuring both sides so I can get this slope. I'll always check the tops to make sure uh, both sides. And then what I'll do is if it's not a sloped roof, okay, I'll check both right side and left side, and then I'll average it out, and I'll put the number right in the middle. You know, I'll just write one number in the middle of the sheet here so I know what it is. Um, and But otherwise, on this slope number, you put the number on this corner here. And then it counts for this this side's left side and this side's right side. So you just put the numbers on the corners and all the way, left side and right side. Okay, that's how you get your cuts. Now you can just see how it all goes together. I've done the uh, measurements and I've drawn them on the the sheet and I cut the cut the top out. 
right? I'm using backing on this job, so it's really easy for me to cut the through the cutouts because I can basically put the backing anywhere I want. However, if you don't have backing, then you just have to cut your tops out to a stud, right? Out to a stud. That's all you have to do. It's not that much different, but the joints, the taping joints are going to be bigger. That's all. Look at what I have in my pouch, right? I got a flat bar here. I have my Olfa knife, my pencil, a rasp. I have my keyhole saw. That's it, man. I got my tape measure, my drywall gun on a hook right my butterfly clamp that's all i got it's a nice light pouch for drywall and on the other side and in my pouch right i got these are the the self-drilling screws for the 16 gauge steel that we're going into and then i have black screws for the uh the wood when you make cut you should rasp them when the pieces have to go together okay you should be rasping them so they're nice and tight you can go along and mark say okay well here's where the top track is so we need to keep the screws down okay i always mark where the top track is make a little tick okay because it's a slip track so then i know i'm gonna put my screws down a little bit further okay i'm not gonna screw into the top track i'm not screwing into that slip track i'm screwing in a little bit lower you see how and this is first layer right so this is a little bit bigger uh the openings are a little bit bigger a little bit looser on first layer um uh but generally i try to get them as perfect as i can on first layer because then when i'm doing second layer then i know what where the adjustments are that i have to make already so you can see here right i'm like oh man i messed that up a little bit so on the next layer i'll know that uh i have to i have to get a tighter number it's also easier when you have a double layer when you're getting the second layer numbers and the draw was on because you can see because everything's kind of angled right but so you can see exactly where it hit intersects with five eights but yeah you can see lots of backing right put it in backing everywhere you need it um like i was saying too before make sure the the beam if it needs to be insulated is insulated You can see there now that it, how it's drawn on the sheet. I'm basically drawing just exactly what I see up here. I'm, all right. And if, and if say, you can't reach something with your square, if you can't reach something with your two foot, your, your T square or whatever, that's where the level comes in. That's where the level comes in, right? You can just level it down, right? Level it down to the bevel and make a tick. It's so it's so simple, right? You're coming off this bevel to there, right? I'm getting this number, this number, and the inside of it, right? And then remember the top lip? So there's four numbers here, right? This number, the inside, this number, and then the other side of there, and this one, okay? Because th this has got a plate on it. That one has a plate, so there's five numbers I had to get there, right? You see that? The plate, so there's one here, one here uh the top and the inside and then the outside of it as well okay one two three four five so it's pretty crazy and then bottom up on that i'm gonna get the bottom which should be the same all the way across and then i'm gonna get the top of the plate at the top of this lip and the top of that so there's one two three four uh more numbers to get on this alone there's nine numbers so nine numbers in total just for the this one girt with the plate. If you're new at this, then use squares, man. Do side to side. If you're on your pipes, get go side to side instead of center. When you get good and you can see the centers, then yeah, man. And you'll start to notice like the standard sizes of pipes and all that. I first draw it all out on the board, and then I, I cut it out with, uh, like I score it with my Olfa knife. Uh, before I cut it with the router. And again, remember, use standard point bits. Standard point bits, not guide point, okay? Standard point, because then you can cut your tops out nice. When you're cutting your tops out, hold the router on an angle towards the outside, the back of the cuts, away from the line. Hold it on a little bit of an angle away from the line, and uh, you'll have a little bit of extra playroom when you're putting your tops in. All right, not a huge angle, but put it on a, just a slight, in a, slight a, on a slight angle when you're cutting there.
And watch that. I'm going to hit that with a rasp. See that? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit that with a rasp so that it goes back together nice. We want to have these joints as tight as we possibly can. And and the backing is important as well because you if you, you don't want to have any flex in there because the tape will crack. Yeah, man. Hopefully I can uh, hopefully I'm showing you as much as I can about tops here. It's uh it's kind of tough to, you know, to show to teach this without without with not being in the field you know um but uh, hopefully this video will help you guys i um, i do have some more like time lapses and stuff i'm going to be putting together on drywalling these tops so you'll see how we kind of loaded the lift and all that and see there you go i'm using the level to to level the oh well i'm, I'm leveling the top okay it's important to, it's a very important to level your top level your first top level first top always and right there i was checking level to make sure it was uh it was still good right but if your bottom row is perfectly level right if this bottom row is has been lasered in and stuff chances are it's going to be pretty close to level if not level up here uh, when you're working with a partner it's also very important that you're both facing the same way when you're working with a partner you're both facing the direction of the board okay so you're both on the you both have your hands are on the same your eyes are on the same same side hands are on the same side and the and the the top that you're cutting is facing the same way that it's going to be going in like that it's going to be installed in it's important that you're both facing the same direction direction you in a partner see you can see here i mu i muffed this one up and there's a there's a there's a hole there no biggie this is the second layer so this is easy to tape but right on oh, there you go getting the um right to left on that girt there and that's where working with a partner is awesome because right then and there i'd just be shutting the number out i wouldn't have to go over and write it down right um i'd be like yo here uh right to left for the girt this number, this number, this number, this number, this number, right? But yeah, like I was saying too, when you're working with an apprentice, I, uh, it's good to get them to square, to square all the numbers over, right? To the bevel and to the butt, right? Because then all they have to do is run their tape measure and read the numbers up and over. It's uh, um, it's pretty cool. Just showing you guys there. You got uh, how I'm getting all my uh, my left to rights. These these angled br br braces here. I'm always. I don't get. I don't go on center of these. I go side to side. Anything on an angle, I go side to side and. Uh, and bottom and top, I always do that. I always get those four numbers um, when it's angled like that. Yeah, that's the other side of the plate, <laughs> right? So it is. It's interesting because the of the slope, it's important that your seats are level. You know, when you're when you're putting them in, the first sheets are level. Uh, you just went along and you you know measured right to left numbers on everything. So, um, but yeah, this is a nice and tight. Um, you can see here as well, like the that this insulation, this roof insulation, it it is a huge uh, like happy face in there. Okay, now we don't cut our board like that, right? Like it is literally like a happy face, right? Now we don't cut our board like that, it, but it is tight. It is tight right here in the middle. It's very tight, and but and it gives a little bit of space here. You can see and over here. Okay, 